back to church. Doors are open 24-7, so you can come in and use the sanctuary at your leisure. And we are happy to be gathered this morning. We always begin with any announcements we might have for the life of the church. I don't think we have any large ones this week. We were delayed in a couple of the projects that we had been planning for last week. So we are working on coordinating a time to, we're going to keep up the tree, keep up the lights in the windows, but we're going to change out from crashes to displays of birds and bird houses in the sanctuary. So we're pulling together a small team to first take down and put away all the crashes and then put up the birds on a separate day. Sue Kerrigan is trying to coordinate who's going to show up in the sanctuary. I'd originally said I could do it on Wednesday, but I realized I'll be at the way station all day. So check in with Sue. Tuesday afternoon's a possibility if you're interested in putting away some Christmas decorations with us and spending a little bit of time in the church together. Are there any other announcements for the life of the church that I'm not aware of? If so, feel free to unmute and go ahead and um, identify yourselves. Okay. Looks like no additional announcements. All right. In that case, Alan, we're going to ask you to offer us our centering music this morning. So if you would just gather yourselves, you know, put your feet firmly on the floor. Maybe close your eyes and just breathe in and enjoy a little bit of music to bring yourselves into this place. to the people. Thank you, Sandy. We're inviting all of you to bring your prayers together this morning, and we follow that with our communal saying of the Lord's Prayer. I just want to begin with a couple of prayer requests from the eight o'clock team. Uh, Mary's daughter, Allie, who lives in Australia, was bitten by a poisonous snake two weeks ago, and they did have um, they had to give her two antivenoms because they weren't sure which one um, was the culprit. And shes it's two weeks later. She is in recovery, but she does ask for ongoing prayers. So her prayer was one of both gratitude and concern because, of course, she can't be in Australia. And so she was giving thanks for the people that are, you know, the helpers along the way. Um, but that's not a prayer you hear every day. We, we've been receiving tons of prayers for many other kinds of things, but we add prayers for recovery from unfriendly environmental guests like snakes to the list. Uh, we continue to pray for Jean, who had fallen last week and is, is mending from broken bones. We pray for Sasha, who is in the hospital after a very necessary procedure and managing pain and mobility and other challenges as she goes in her recovery. She is surrounded by her family at the moment. Um, they are supporting her through this. We think of Richard, um, Sandra's husband, who has been undergoing treatment for cancer, and that's an ongoing thing. And there are several people in our community who are either undergoing treatment actively right now for cancer or are in the next phase of 
sort of waiting and watching. So for all people who are living with cancer actively or who are in a time of recovery and praying for ongoing stability, for those who have lost someone to cancer, we pray for all those whose bodies are affected by cancer um, and diabetes and so many other things. Sandy Poor's brother, <laughs> Helen, broke his leg. Oh, there's quite a list. Um, we should add to the list. So what is what are your concerns this week? We're starting with concerns, and we're going to jump to celebrations after we kind of focus first on what, where our hearts are heavy. Where might you have a request? Alan has one here in the sanctuary. Go ahead, Alan. Here. Active COVID in the branch in the the bank branch where Alan works. They had, to, they had to close it. It's under quarantine, but Alan is okay. And he's allowed to work from home now. So he's happy about that. Praying for Alan's colleagues and others who are actively living with COVID. There are several families in our church right now um, who have all of their immediate family members, like one, one step removed, have COVID, um, like Lori Kinsey's whole family, uh, her, her sister and their whole family and others too. Anybody out in the world of Zoom who would like to share a concern, Meg? I would, I would like to share a concern for all the businesses um, in the schools and the businesses lately in the Valley. There are several that are now closed for um, exposure to COVID and concern for them, the employees um, and their livelihoods and their health. Thank you, that's well said, Meg. And we can extend that prayer to all the communities where people are zoomed in. You know, I mean, this is affecting not just the Valley, but obviously we know the whole country, the whole world. Um, in its resurgence. Other prayers of concern, feel free to unmute and go ahead and speak if you do have any. Kevin, you can unmute and go ahead. That's the invitation, so go for it, please. Okay. Um, prayer for Reverend Gail and Chris and Pastor Nathan and Jennifer and my friend Tina who has COVID-19 and uh, Roy and Freddie, who are passing away, prayer for them. Mm -hmm. And for the frontline workers, the first responders in the military, and the doctors and nurses. Kevin, thank you. Yeah. I think he covered a lot of the bases that if we hadn't already touched on them, he got them. So thank you, Kevin. And I'm just poking around. Oh, I see you. Go ahead, then. I just want to ask for, I have a good friend, Kim, who's going to have shoulder surgery on the first, um, and she's kind of anxious about it. So just prayers that everything goes well and for the doctors and nurses that are there. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. We will hold your friend Kim in prayer as well for her joints. Um, I know we've been doing this body prayer, and it's it's it sounds like a joke sometimes, and it sounds like a really long song. Today I'm going to ask, you choose which part of the body you are praying for for yourself or someone else, and place your hands on that part of the body. Myself, I'll just place it sort of on the chest for our hearts and our lungs, but I'm thinking of spines. And, and we know that all the pieces of our body are connected. And I remind you that as we place our hands communally on parts of our body that we are concerned for, that we are praying for each other's bodies, for the bodies of our loved ones, for the body of Christ itself in this time, which is the body of the whole world and all the children of God who are in need of healing, for the mind within the brain, within the body, for the emotional seat the heart of you and the soul of you and the spirit of you and those you love within this body. We ask for healing, for light, for comfort, for dignity, 
for restoration and reknitting when this is possible, for God's tangible and loving presence in the hands of those who become the helpers along the way to touch the bodies of those we love tenderly and bear witness to lives that we celebrate and give thanks for, to those we are saying goodbye to and letting go, to those we are missing. We pray for the whole body of Christ. And your hands, wherever they are, are offering a blessing to others who need to feel the warmth of your touch and God's love and a caregiver's healing presence in their lives. I ask that you would now hold your hands out, cupped to both offer and receive blessing in a posture of blessing. And now, as we both receive and give blessing, let us name the things that we are grateful for and that we celebrate. And I see that there is a hand raised in the Battenfelder house, so why don't you go for it, Evie? Um, today is my birthday. <gasps> Happy birthday! That's an excellent way to start our celebration. <laughs> are, there any other, are there any other near birthdays um, that want to be outed this morning? Oh, Kate? Oh, you're just, you're just, your hands no. just near the camera. <laughs> um, well, then I think we should all unmute and sing a very melodious happy birthday <laughs> to Evie. The only people that aren't going to sing are those of us here in the sanctuary. So the rest of us are going to have to do it for the whole church. So unmute yourselves if you can and sing to Evie. One, two, three. <gasps> Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you, happy 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 that was fun, if not perfect, and we don't go for perfection. Evie, perfect. what number is this? Oh, good question. Nine? Nine. 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 Oh, wow. Great. Evie, I wouldn't have, wow, you're, you're, you're going pretty fast there in those birthdays. They're adding up. Um, let's see, other things that people want to celebrate. Kevin? Um. Jennifer, did you want to celebrate? Yep. Um, we were hoping to at least get one memorial bench paid for for my dad for uh -huh. the big wetlands, and we have enough for two. Oh, my goodness. That's wonderful. So two memorial benches in honor of your father, yep. for Sandy and Jen's father. Other celebrations? Kevin, go ahead. I'm grateful for birds, butterflies, and um, the sunshine, and our church, and all its members. And I'm grateful for God. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> um, anybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Arden. Go ahead. Okay, um, I I just don't know how to get my face in there, but I I, I got this part. I'm uh -huh. just happy that this past week ended up the way it did. Um, that every but I don't know about anybody else, but I was so beyond tense until Wednesday was finished, and um, I'm just grateful that we're beginning yes, again. For yeah, for for peaceful transition of power, um, you bet, and a chance to start reknitting fractured relationships. Um, we're grateful for the tranquility that we did end up experiencing when when we were all a little bit alert for and worried for other events instead. 
and gratitude for all those that help to create that, right? You know, um, we know that there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes in order to ensure uh, domestic tranquility, that phrase, and perhaps international tranquility in ways that we do not fully appreciate. And occasionally we hear little snippets of those stories. So for those that help create it, that's wonderful and I, I appreciate it. And I just want to add a couple more prayers of gratitude that were asked for from this morning. Um, Erica, whose father had passed a couple weeks ago, um, had a happy news today. Her twins, Vivian and George, each lost a tooth. They lost them in different ways. Vivian kept wiggling hers for months, and then they were wrestling, and she actually she accidentally kicked her brother in the face and helped knock out his front tooth. And so now they have matching missing front teeth, top right hand front teeth. So um, they demonstrated their smiles to us this morning, and the smiles of twins with a missing tooth were very cute. Um, and again, prayers, uh, gratitude where healing is happening. Um, and next steps are going on for people. Sometimes it's two steps forward, one step back, but we, we are grateful for, for healing. We pray also for our partner church, the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare in the nation of Zimbabwe. We pray for our sister communities in Honduras. We pray for all the places where our children are living, Australia and Canada, Italy. Uh, you, you probably have people in other places that I haven't even thought of yet, but wherever our children, our, our extended family are living, we're reminded how close we are to each of these communities. And so we pray again for the whole body of God. I ask us now to lift up that prayer, remembering both the healing and the hope that we have when we call for comfort and our gratitude and our celebration. And may we lay those experiences into the way that we say the Lord's Prayer. And I ask that we pray together. We'll put the words up on the screen for you. Please unmute so that we can pray together. Our Father, yes. who art in heaven, who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. Hallelujah. Thy kingdom come, thy, kingdom come. thy, kingdom come. thy, thy will, be will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily, our daily bread. bread. Give us and forgive us our sins as we give those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen. At this time, we will share with you the scripture for this morning. These are excerpts from passages that talk about sparrows. The first of these is Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. Thy, they neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And then, from Matthew 10, verses 29 through 31. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet none of them will fall to the ground apart from your Father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than sparrows. And are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. So ends the reading. And as the five o'clock Friday group can certainly attest, I think we have to begin with the scriptural math or the math of sparrows. Did anybody notice that in the 
chapter from Matthew, two sparrows are worth one penny. And when we get to the story as told in the Gospel of Luke, five sparrows are worth two pennies. So if you go to the market and you buy your sparrows from Luke, you'll get a better deal. And, you know, that's what we're thinking about is the value of, of life itself. Um, we're thinking about more than math. We're thinking about a bigger measure of value. And I think there are a couple of things that's important for you to know. The first is that when Jesus makes these analogies to the sparrows, the sparrows as we think about them are a joyful bird. You know, there are song sparrows. There are different kinds of sparrows. And we think of them as a bird that we appreciate, right? We think of them as birds that would land with St. Francis of Assisi on that statue and be a pleasure. That's the reason that the deacons even helped decide that for the next few weeks we will think about birds because we need hope, we need light, we need song in our lives. And birds take us out of ourselves when we are focused on looking at a creature that can fly and the funny, quixotic, or majestic behaviors of birds, we're transported, and our hearts might get a little bit lighter, and we start to have a different perspective. And certainly, that's a piece of what's being offered in the scripture. But sparrows in the time of Christ were a nuisance bird. They were held to have virtually no value. And when you think of birds being sold in the marketplace, they weren't being sold as an offering for the temple they were sold as food. So if you wanted sparrows for dinner, I guess you definitely would go to Luke for your sparrows because you'd get the better bargain. We know there are people that watch the coupons and they know exactly where to get the best bargain on a chicken. In Luke's day, it was bargains for sparrows. The other thing to think about when Jesus is telling these stories is that that math is being shared with groups of people. It's not being shared with a single person. In the first passage from Matthew, where we hear about two sparrows being worth a penny, he's talking to the apostles who are about to go out in pairs. He's launching them out into the world to carry the message of this new way of thinking and being in connection with God in working partnerships. And so his math in the pairs may have something to do with the fact that you're not alone. And that if two birds are worth something, surely God will follow and be with people that are going out in their partnerships to do their work in the world. And at the same time, in Luke, he's talking not to just pairs of people, he's talking to thousands of people. And he's saying, God can count all of you. I mean, how many hairs do you think you have on your head? Maybe 100,000? I mean, any number that you could imagine, any number that you can imagine, God can count every one of them and know one from the other. And if no matter how many sparrows there are in the field, God can single you out and love you and appreciate you. So there's this amazing tension of, don't worry. But we're worrying species by nature, right? I mean, what we do is we prepare and we plan. That's what we were talking about, the gratitude for the relief that we prepared, embraced ourselves for what might happen this week, and we breathe deeper when it didn't happen but we are people who worry by nature, so it's hard to not worry. So perhaps the way that we take the Matthew 6 text, which tells us if, that if you're looking at the birds of the air and they neither sow nor reap, they don't plan, they don't do anything to help take care of themselves, they just are who they are, and we're supposed to be that way, we know that implicitly by nature, we're probably not that way. We, we may be wired for joy, but we're also wired to worry and plan 
and prepare and be productive, right? That's how we measure our own worth often. We, we talk about who we are in our jobs, how much we've accomplished, how much we earn. Um, we measure ourselves by external portfolios of, of value. But God is saying to pull yourself back into another place. Be mindful that you are valuable regardless of what your job is, how much money you have, how many hairs you have on your head. You could be bald or have the best head of hair there is. God sees you for the fullness of your value. You could be nine or 90. You could be Evie or you could be one of our seniors and it, you're equally of value. You could have all your teeth or you might be missing teeth like the set of twins. God doesn't count that way. Every single life is valuable. But also embedded in the way that we are wired to live together and commanded to live together is the assumption that we are partners with God. Take care of the widow, the orphan, the stranger in your land. Love your neighbor as yourself. When Christ talked to people and said, why should you worry? You'll be taken care of. There is an assumption that you are listening to him inside a community that is already a healthy community capable of taking care of each other and that part of your holy duty as a being who recognizes the value of others is to take care of others as well and so when we're told not to worry it doesn't mean don't do what you need to do to take care of each other it simply means rest in the assurance that there are people who are the helpers along the way and when you can't get to Australia for your child who is bitten by a snake this is when you sometimes learn the lesson of the letting go and the praying and the believing that there will be that help if not in your body in somebody else's hands to be there on behalf of you for the one that you love we pray that this is always so and we know that we fall short. Often we fall short of this measure of being there for each other, but we get up and we try again. And for every piece of bad news you hear, how many pieces of good news weren't lifted up? Every day, all around you, you are witnessing good news. You are witnessing hope in the kindnesses and the small compassions and acts of justice that we do for each other. And so I invite you again to look into the Zoom screen, or if you're in the sanctuary, look at the people gathered in the sanctuary and see the measure of goodness and the helpers along the way that we are for each other and know that in all parts of the world, there are people that do this for each other. And so perhaps the other invitation of the sparrow, who doesn't work and doesn't worry but in its being fulfills its role in the world. It doesn't even know all the things that it's capable of doing, giving us the gift of song, lifting us up with its flight, or helping fulfill its place in the ecosystem by simply doing what it does in its own nature. Is in our mindfulness to simply be grateful. We can plan and program and schedule and prepare all the time. But the other reminder is to pause, to look up into the sky, to look at the light, to look at each other and appreciate what's here right where you are right now and give thanks for these blessings. This perspective of mindfulness, of pausing and appreciating where you are right now is another way that we retain our balance and restore our capacity to go on and get back to the work of taking care of each other.
the math of the sparrow is singular and exceptional. You can get a bargain in it. It begins with you, but it is multiplied when you look around you and you see all the lives that touch yours. And yes, the math of the sparrow includes planning ahead and looking at schedules, but it's also this moment and this day and gratitude and perspective right now and right here. I can't resist. I want to finish us off with the last few lines of the poem that was offered by Amanda Gorman on Inauguration Day. The new dawn balloons as we free it. For there is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. Let the sparrow point us towards the light within ourselves and within each other. Thanks be to God. And speaking of math, now I ask that you will indeed honor those promises and commitments that you have made to this community in your giving. Whether you walk back through our unlocked front doors and pick up an envelope and drop it in the church building that Sandy and Jennifer's father made that sits in the front of our narthex receiving donations, or you bail in your offering, or you go online to jxncc.org. There are many ways that you can maintain your commitment, and we appreciate it as we begin this new year, because we are indeed a vibrant part of this valley and this world, and it is through you that we become this broad, far-flung, flying body of Christ together. And we are going to migrate from that request to the song that we'll sing together. So um, you know how this goes. Feel free to be muted. But we've chosen a song that I think you all know the tune to. And we changed one word. See if you can spot it when we get there. To He's got the whole world in his hands. We're going to sing four verses. out who is paying attention who noticed what the word was that we changed go ahead tell me sparrow sparrow yeah <laughs> not the little bitty baby the little bitty sparrow <laughs> just for fun well that brings us to the benediction so we're going to sing the benediction together and then you can stay and chat together or you are welcome to uh, head on into your bright and beautiful day. May the
Just as a final reminder about the themes of the sparrows, may I offer you the words of St. Francis as he used to preach them literally to the birds. These, these words were written down and reported back to the um, order in which, to which he belonged. But he was out preaching to the birds. My little sisters, the birds, ye owe much to God your creator, and ye ought to sing his praises at all times and all places because he has given you the liberty to fly about into all places. And though you neither spin nor sew, he has given you a twofold and a threefold clothing for yourselves and for your offspring. Two of all your species he sent into the ark with Noah that you might not be lost to the world, besides which he feeds you, though you neither sow nor reap. He has given you fountains and rivers to quench your thirst, mountains and valleys in which to take your refuge, and trees in which to build your nests, so that your creator loves you much, having thus favored you with such bounties. Study always to praise God. Go in peace, little brothers, little sisters, sparrows, children of the world. Mm -hmm.